Hey everybody, JJ here. Welcome back for another Wednesday edition of Zoom Networking. Um, you know, today's guest speaker is a phenomenal individual. Uh, I talk about networking all the time, building relationships. And as you go out and you build those relationships, you're going to meet some phenomenal people. And this young man is, um, if I freaking had a son, I'd want it to be just like this guy. Our guest speaker today is none other than my good friend, Mike Gomes. Uh, Mike, how are you doing today, my friend? Good, brother. How are you doing? I'm good, man. Like I was saying, if I had a son, I'd want him to be just like you. You are so impressive. I was talking to somebody about you today that you're – you're polished, you're sharp, you're driven, you're focused, and you got a little bit of hip hop in you. <laughs> Is it because my hat's backwards, bro? There you go. There you go. <laughs> you know, and you got a tattoo. So I got I gotta love the tattoos because I got it too. Now you can put the yeah, flip the hat around. I mean, I love bro. that. I love your style all the way around. Um, so uh, you know, let, let's let's chat about you, brother. You know, we you you're out of the pace warby program, right? I am. Pace Morby is the absolute God. He has changed my life like completely. Um, who Mike is as a person, I am just the, I want to say, purebred entrepreneur. I've been hustling since I can remember. And it's always just been a grind. And that's that's kind of what I am. I'm a grinder and a hustler, and I just love business in general. So at the moment, I am running a direct-to-seller wholesaling business. Um, doing about three deals a month up here in Boston. So we're, we're focusing pretty much just on cash deals. We do do some creative finance deals as well here and there, but um, essentially we're direct to sell wholesaling. And that's the operation that I'm scaling out of at the moment. So we've done pretty well over the past mm. six months. We scaled up fairly quick. And now I'm getting in the process of scaling out of it. So we have virtual assistants, cold calling and acquisition manager now. So it's, it's getting fun. Now for people that are new to real estate, we have experienced people with us on the call today and watching. We have new people that are on the call and watching on YouTube as well. What do you mean by you're going to be scaling up your business? Got it. So essentially Mike is lifting up, right? Like I am no longer going to be the person calling sellers all the time, going on appointments all the time, locking contracts all the time and working in the business. It would be like if you were, you know, my, my father, he is a drywaller, right? Him scaling out of his drywall business would be him never going into a property and putting up drywall and putting up the mud, right? He would be lifted out and, you know, he would have his workers working in the property doing doing all the things. So that's essentially what scaling out is. What it does for me is it's going to allow me to go sit at different tables and go build other things. And that's, that's what's so important to me. So for me, it's like, I have this wholesale business right now that's, that's doing well. And it's been my bread and butter, right? It's what's kind of taken me off, but I need it to just be my heartbeat. Something that keeps heart, something that keeps beating while I go sit at the other tables and build other businesses and, you know, build my um, buy and hold portfolio and all these things on the side and grow those while this thing is still beating. Okay. So you're basically, you know, you know, I know how successful you are and people that have been in some for more than a minute know how successful you are. And as you're, you're growing and growing your business, you're going to implement, you know, delegation to set yourself free so you can move into other parameters and have your business still run, which is phenomenal. Um, what I'll you tell you, with- JJ, it's not easy. Oh, you it's, know, it's uh, one of the hardest things that I have done. Um, and part of it is just my background. I'm, I'm a person who just really wants to just get things done on my own sometimes. And it's hard for me, right, to just let things go. Well, so, you know, let, let, let me ask you about that. Okay. Um, as you're handing things off, you want them done certain ways. Are you finding that you're spending a lot of time writing new procedures for things so that there's consistency in how they're done? So that's what I was doing in the beginning and it was hurting me. Right. So I would essentially 
you could call it micromanaging. That's what I was doing a lot of. Now, where I've seen a lot of growth is when I just told, like my acquisition manager, for example, that's been the hardest thing. The guy going out, getting contracts instead of Mike, right? That's been the hardest thing to scale out of. And what it has been is just throwing him in the fire and being okay with him messing everything up. So that's essentially what I've been doing. And he's had so much growth. Like he, if you guys watch, go on my YouTube, you'll, you'll watch, I go live every single day, Monday through Friday, and you'll see his growth. It's me and him essentially going over deals. And um, he's, he's came such a long way, but it's been hard for me, right? Because I have this business where I have overhead that I have to abide by every month. I have to pay my virtual assistants every month. I have systems and all these things that I pay every single month. So when I see leads coming in, I'm like, no, let me close them. I know how to close them. I know how to make the money, right? So letting somebody take over those leads and just close them on their own or maybe even mess them up has been big for me to just turn a blind eye and let that go. So you said you got your own YouTube channel now? Mm-hmm. How, how long have you been doing that? Um, gosh, man, I'm not sure. Probably like six months now. I think I've had a YouTube channel for a little bit, but I just started posting content about six months ago. Okay, well, you know what? I'm I'm just gonna pull your YouTube up right now. We're gonna share it. We're gonna share it with everybody. Here's Mike's YouTube. Mike Gums, 149 subscribers. I'm gonna subscribe. Uh, I'm cool. gonna su- suggest that everybody else on the call, you know, um, do it now or make a note to yourself to subscribe to Mike, support Mike, promote Mike, and like Mike. I like Mike. You know, um, but here's his stuff. You can come in, you can, this is the homepage, but you can click videos and come in and see some of the content he's got here. He's got some, some really good stuff. He's obviously working on it. And uh, you got a, you got a young man here in these photos with you. Um, so um, you met a couple friends along the way, right? And sub two. 100%. I wouldn't have been able to do, I wouldn't be where the position that I'm in right now without, all the people that I met in sub two. So how do you find um, to go with that for the new investor? What is the importance of networking to get one's business going off the ground? The importance of networking, this is going to sound so cliche, but it's bringing value. Right. And here's, I've been actually having this conversation with um, some new sub two students lately where they, they'll come to me and they'll say, hey, you know, I've, I've wanted to like network and maybe plug into somebody's business or something like that. Um, I just don't know how to go about it. I'm like, okay, listen, think about this, right? If you want to go maybe work on somebody's leads or help them with TC or do something in their business, essentially network with them and get in their world, you have to get their attention. So it's about getting their attention. So what I was telling people is, hey, if, if I was um, trying to go plug into somebody's business or matter of fact, let me just bring it to myself. If I was trying to attract an employee, I'm going to make sure I get these people who could be my employees attention and show that they they want to do business with me. Right. So essentially, that's that's what this is. You have to go out there and put yourself out there and bring value. So for for example, right, my business partner, his name is Andrew. Um, this is another thing, right? People ask, how do I find an integrator? And they, they'll just post on Facebook, hey, I need an integrator. And an integrator is somebody who does like the systems and stuff in your business. I needed that. That was one thing that I needed. And a lot of people ask me, hey, how did you find that guy? Did you just post on Facebook like, hey, I need an integrator? I'm like, no, it didn't really work like that. How it really worked is I was putting myself out there and the value that I was bringing was coming everywhere. So everybody was seeing it. So naturally, somebody who was very talented got in my world from the attention that I was getting. So I was pouring value into the marketplace, getting people's attention, and naturally it came to me. So same thing, like if you wanted to go plug into somebody's business, pouring value out there, getting people's attention, aka it could be, let's just say you wanted to work with 
the guy Daryl that I did a podcast with. Actually, very perfect example. This is how he got his acquisition manager. His acquisition manager kept coming to him with problems. Like, hey, dude, help me with this lead. Help me with this lead. This I have this problem. I have this problem. Finally, Daryl just like, dude, just come work for me. That's how you get into somebody's world. Yeah, no, that that's outstanding. And, and that, that goes with what I say all the time is be visible. If, if people aren't visible, people don't know who they are, then their opportunities will go right past them. And that that person working with Daryl, you know, made himself known, made himself visible. And then the up through being visible, opportunity presents itself. 100%. That's just how you get visible. Right now. I think here's where a lot of people will go the wrong way. They'll go the wrong way because they ask, right? Hey, they'll walk, here's what they'll do. They'll get people's attention at like a networking event, like the Clever Summit or something like that. And then finally get in contact with somebody and say, hey, how do we do deals together? How can I help you out? And the person that they're talking to is like, what the heck do you mean? I, I barely know you. <laughs> right? And they kind of skip that phase. And what the first phase really should be is, hey, who is JJ? Tell, tell me, JJ, like if you were to just give a rundown of who JJ is, who is JJ? Like, tell me what your value are, values are, what your morals are and all that stuff. So I get to understand JJ, who, who he, he is as a person, rather than just saying, imagine if I caught JJ's attention because he sees me all on Instagram and everything like that. And then all of a sudden we plug in together. And the first thing I say is, hey, JJ, um, how, how can I bring you value, bro? JJ is going to be like, what the hell do you want? What do you want from me, bro? Why do you want to bring me value? You don't even know me. Yeah, it, it's, you, um, I get that question all the time. And with, from my networking aspect, one of my things I like to say is don't chase a deal, chase a relationship. You know, mm -hmm. uh, get to know someone, ask them questions, build rapport, develop some kind of a connection that leads into, you know, them liking you. If I, if I want to get to know someone, I want them to like me, but I need to get to know them. And, you know, there's different ways to go about that. Obviously, I've got the, the, the Zoom calls now. People kind of know me with the Zoom calls. But to get to this point, for me to get noticed, for me to build my network, for me to, to have people willing to accept my friend request, it was a matter of being visible on Facebook, you know, liking a post, but how to like the post because Facebook has this algorithm that measures your activity. There's a, there's a right and a wrong way to like a post. Mm -hmm. There's a, a right and a wrong way to create a post. And, you know, how do you engage with other people? And that's kind of what I try and help people with. So, you know, you talk about leading with value. Um, I've, I've built my network. I've built my visibility by leading with value and, and just try and build my friendships along the way. And, um, and I've always been this way. I, I don't really ask people what they do. I, I want to get to know the person first and, I tell everybody if they lead with who they are, the same person their parents love, their grandparents or their kids or grandkids, you be that person that people love and know, then, then you, you can't lose. Here's what it is, JJ, right? Leading with value attracts the right people into your world. <clears throat> okay. But just because they get attracted to your world doesn't mean that you're going to have a good relationship with them. How does that relationship start? It starts by getting to know the person, like who, who they are, what they like, right? And, and not just talking about cats and dogs, but who the heck is JJ as a person? What does he care about? JJ, if, if you were to give some sort of message out to the world and, and like with a click of a button, it would be in everybody's brain, what would that message be? Those types of questions to figure out who JJ is and what he's trying to accomplish in the world. That way you can start figuring out how you bring somebody value. So for a perfect example, I was bringing value to the marketplace and then all of a sudden acquisition manager came my way. Now I could have said, Hey bro. Yeah. Lovely. Just go, go talk to some people. If that happened, what do you think would happen? It'd probably work for me for a few weeks and then say, all right, screw this. This, this guy doesn't care. Instead. I'm like, dude, like, what are you trying to accomplish here? What are your goals? What are your dreams? What do you like? What are you trying to do? Why would you ever want to come in this business and do do calls for me like what are you looking to accomplish from that i hear the the word all the time mindset 
you know, and, and when we work with other people, part of that's to understand their mindset and that we're both of the same mindset, you know, um, that's got a lot to do with people's motivation. You know, um, I, I wanted to ask you, you know, um, we had a topic that we we're going to talk about and, and so much to talk about. We can talk for hours. But uh, originally, you know, we we're talking about overcoming business and wholesale mindset blockers. Do you, do you mm. want to touch on that a bit? For sure. So when JJ first asked me to come on here, he's like, hey, bro, can you come up with some sort of topic that um, just makes sense for you right now to talk about? And I'm thinking about it and I'm like, hmm. What should I do? Should I te- should I talk about how, you know, we pull lists and how we re- manage a team and how we do all that? I'm like, eh, no, nah, it's not really what I care about right now. And what I came what came to mind is like all these things that were getting in my way. Like, how was I overcoming them? Because I kept I kept overcoming little blockers that were getting in my way, right? So that's what came to mind. And essentially, it was me that was in the way of everything. And it always is. Whenever there's something that comes up in my life where I feel like I'm not able to push through the wall, it's myself that's getting in the way. I told a a story on my Instagram not too long ago where I was having a knee problem, right? And I I run a lot. I, I run miles like every day. And I was having a problem with my knee. And I'm like, what the heck? This problem is not going away with my knee. So I'm just like, all right, maybe I got to like do some rehab and work it out a little bit more and maybe cool down on the miles or actually maybe I'll do more miles. I kept doing some, did it for like a month. Finally, I'm like, okay, it got so bad where I had to stop running. And I called one of my homies who runs a lot too. And he's like, bro, why don't you just try changing your shoes? It sounds like you, you probably ran a bunch of miles in those shoes already. You should probably try changing them, change them. And literally it was night and day. So who was the root of the problem. It was me. So I believe there, there are all, there's two ways, um, two of the best ways to learn, right? One of them is to go do what I did in that situation and put your hand on the stove and get burnt and be like, ah, okay, I know I got to go get new shoes. Now, next time I'm not going to run my shoes up. Right. Or I could have just known in the beginning when the problem started happening to go talk to somebody who has been there before, or maybe even know somebody that has done that before. Right. So in, in my life, just my journey, I tend to have a problem of going down road. Number one of having to put my hand on the, on the stove and get burnt. And it's a blessing and not a blessing at the same time. For me, I'm a freaking action taker. I'm just going to keep going and going and going and going and going. And what happens is, is I put my hand on the stove and I get burnt. The reason why I am like that is because of my upbringing. I came from an upbringing where I had to grow up quick, right? Like I, I, I had some things that happened in the beginning of my life where I essentially had to um, parent myself where like there was drugs and violence and stuff in my household. So I had to grow up quick. So what happened is throughout my whole entire like younger years up to maybe, dude, actually like recently, probably 27 years old, Mike is thinking he has to do everything on his own. How do you learn when you're doing everything on your own? You go do it. Something happens. You learn and correct. It's a good way to learn, honestly. Like you you get the lesson. Like I got the lesson. My knee hurt enough. I know I'm not going to let my shoes run out anymore. So I got the lesson you do learn. And I, I believe that there's a lot of things in life where you have to go down that road. God wants you to go down that road or the higher power or whatever you believe in wants you to go down that road. But there's, it's crazy because there's an easier way. You can just go plug into somebody who has been down that road yeah. or talk to somebody who knows somebody who has been down that road. Because there's an infinite amount of roads and there's an infinite amount of people that have been down those roads. You just got to go find the right who. So it's funny that we're talking about this because, like I said recently, is is when I started started opening my eyes to number two. 
was doing everything on my own. And it, it reminded me of my wholesale business. I got into my wholesale business and I was doing everything, right? Like I, I had a virtual assistant. I was the one following up on the leads, calling the leads, um, closing the leads, doing the dispo, managing all the systems. I was doing absolutely everything. What happened was, is I, I got deals done, right? Like you're going to go create chaos and you're going to get some, some shit done. But for me, I was going crazy in my head. I'm like, dude, I'm only doing like a deal every six weeks. I'm working like a freaking dog. What am I doing here? I go to Pace Morby's mastermind and it changed my life. So Jamil is also another man who has changed my life. I go to the mastermind and Jamil brings us through. And I don't want to ruin this for anybody who plans on going to the mastermind. I don't know if this is what he does for everyone, but essentially what Jamil did is he, he brought us through a meditation where we go back to our past and we have to go figure out what is wrong with us. And I find out, right. He brings us back. He says, go back to a time where somebody hurts you the worst. I go back to a time where I found my mother's crack pipe in her purse. And I can just remember screaming as a little kid, like, I don't deserve this. So I go back to that time and then he brings you into another scene, um, which obviously that like I'm sitting there and paces mastermind bawling my eyes out at that point. So he then brings us back to a time where he tells us to go to that person and forgive them. And immediately after that, I went to the bathroom, I had to wipe my tears and everything, but I felt just a sense of relief. And I'm like, holy crap, this is what, this is what has been wrong with me this whole entire time. I'm like, I, I have been holding on to this thing that has made me go do everything by myself. Once it was finally released, I was then able to go home from the mastermind, get a partner, trust in people to help me run my business, go find who's to implement in the right spaces and start to do multiple deals a month and do the things that I really want to do, which for the past like maybe four months was just talking to sellers. Like I didn't want to manage anything else. I didn't want to do dispo. I didn't want to do anything. I just wanted to talk to sellers. Now I'm getting to the point where I'm like, okay, I'm getting kind of burnt out talking to sellers. I got to go do some other things, right? So again, I'm getting to a point where I had a blocker. Funny thing, literally like a month ago, I get on, on a Q&A with Pace and he gives me some really good freaking advice on how to scale out and how to essentially delegate the acquisition manager role. And it was the same thing. It was like something was released and it actually felt like I just leveled up, like you were in a freaking video game and I leveled up to the next video game. How did that happen though? It happened from me talking to somebody who has been down that road before. Same thing with Jamil. Jamil has been down the road before and that's, what, that's why he did what he did in the mastermind. I had to get in the right rooms with those people who were going down the roads, right? that I was having roadblocks in that have already been down there that know how to just move the cones and move the roadblocks. So I believe with having those two things to learn from, just taking action and freaking burning and crashing and creating chaos, you need that. Because if you just go with number two, you're going to be stuck with analysis paralysis. But Something in the middle where you're able to combine the both is where you legitimately can do anything. Whenever you have a problem, it's one of those two. You have to keep going through the problem and wait till your hand is very hot from the stove, or you need to just go figure out who can solve that problem for you. And if you can do either one of those two things or a combination of the two, then you literally can just do anything. Excellent. Now, with, with that being said, um, I 
am doing this on a day to day, like every single day, there's things that I go through that I need to overcome. And I got to either take action and just keep going and learn from it or go find out somebody who can help me. Um, so I haven't done everything, nor will I ever by the time that I'm, you know, no longer here. But from what I've been through now, I would love to help out anybody who has maybe heard this story or can it kind of understand where I'm at in my business, who is trying to get there that might have some roadblockers. And I would love if you could follow me on Instagram at the Mike Gomes and shoot me a DM. Actually, don't even shoot me a DM right now. Just once you see one of my posts and it reminds you like, oh, crap, I remember this call with Mike. I think I'm going through something right now. Let me shoot him a DM because that's what's going to happen. That's how the universe works. You're going to one day be scrolling. You're going to see my one of my posts and you're going to be like, holy crap, I'm going through something. I need a DM, Mike. Boom, DM me. And I would love to help you try to get through one of those things. Or if I don't even know, because like I said, I don't know everything at all. I at least might be able to steer you in the right direction to somebody who has been down one of those roads. Because at the end of the day, that conversation can be just like the conversation that I had with Pace recently, where I felt like I just got to the next level. You know, um, I'm seeing comments in the chat and you've got people reaching for facial tissues and uh, thrilled about how you're impacting them. And, and um, it's huge. You know, your story is very, very impactful and your motivation, your inspiration is huge. And I can tell you're going to have people reaching out to you, which is, you know, part of the, the, the benefit for everybody. You know, they win by getting a chance to engage with you. You win because you see that people are responding and growing and learning from your sharing. And of course, I'm winning because I, I love to see everybody benefit. And I just, you know, that's that's kind of my thing. But, um, you know, let, let, let me ask you, um, I know that, the uh, you know, Daryl Ellison, right? <laughs> He's uh, another student that's done pretty well. And you and, you and he are, are pretty good friends, right? That's my guy. He's turning into one of my best friends. Daryl is the absolute man. He is one of these people who can steer you in the right direction, who has been down a lot of roads that can help you release these roadblocks. So if you don't know Daryl Ellison, I would highly suggest getting to know Daryl Ellison. Yeah, just, just another one of the class acts and sub two, uh, like yourself. He's actually got a presentation we've had recently. Um, you know, I know we're, we're rolling in here. We could go on for a couple more hours, but I think we're, we're going to cut it for now, go to the breakout rooms and, and benefit in there because uh, as you and I were talking yesterday, we could probably go for a couple hours if we just let it roll. But mm -hmm. uh, I am going to want to want to have you back and jump back on the phone in the future. Um if not, uh, you know, can't wait till my house in LA gets done. You get, you can come out here for the housewarming party. Let's go, dog. Yeah, let's go. So um, I'm just gonna say, hey, you know, if, if you guys are watching the video right now on YouTube, please click below and subscribe to the channel. But like Mike's video, and please put some comments there in YouTube in support of Mike and in, in support of his presentation. And again, uh, Mike, you you want to. Uh, I'm going to share your, your IG here again really quick because I've got it up on another screen. Um, and if, Mike, if you can see this, this is your IG, right? Mm -hmm. the, the Mike Gums, uh, 1,300 followers. Uh, and this is his content. This is his page. It seems like you got a lot, a lot of videos in there, right? I'm getting there, bro. Yeah, well, I mean, it's not just still photos, but you're, you're, you're bringing content with everything you're putting out there. And... Um, so, uh, my, I, I just want to thank you for being on today, my friend. Just, just huge, 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 huge. A lot of value, uh, a lot of good information, and um, you know, hopefully, we'll we'll have you back again soon. Does that sound good to you? Cool. Hey, so if you guys are watching today, we want we want to thank you so much. If you're on the call, don't go away because we're going to go to the breakout rooms, which are hugely enjoyable, and. Um, Please subscribe to uh, Flipside Up with JJ on my YouTube and join my networking group on Facebook, which is JJ's Mastermind Networking. And, uh, you know, try and find me on Facebook. We'll get you added into, into all the networking. And I want to thank everybody for being with us. So thank you so much. We'll see you guys soon. Over and out.